to this video and I'm going to have a small discussion about how to prepare your new orchid if you're planning to transition it to any other media than what it is accustomed to. And we have ourselves a candidate here, <laughs> a bifoliate. Who knew? Let's go with the picky ones straight off the bat because if we can get the picky ones right, the rest are easy peasy. Let me start out by just saying one thing here with regards to what is in your pot when you receive your orchid. It is very easy in this instant to have taken the orchid out, check the roots, put it back in, fill the media around loosely and keep it in the pot until the right time. But what if you have an orchid that is so pot bound but you don't have new roots growing and you do want to transition it to a different kind of media in my case, lecker and self-watering, but you can't get the orchid out of the pot to check how the root system is doing. Well, in this case, I just want to say, leave it in the pot. And this is exactly what I've done with this one. First of all, just leave the orchid in the pot. If you have absolutely no new roots growing and it just comes and you're like, okay, don't worry about it, leave it in the pot. Now, I want to also preempt one thing that a lot of people do or that I've read in comments. People take the step of preparing an orchid for a transition into LECA and self-water or semi-hydro by starting the transition while the orchid is still in the old media, thinking that if you saturate and get the roots that are in the media used to a more wet environment while it is in that media prior to the transitioning repot, you think you're already training the roots to become accustomed to their future environment, which is gonna be wetter for longer and totally different to what this setup here would require, which is the classic wet dry cycle. That is a mistake in my opinion. When an orchid comes into a collection that you want to transition into like self-watering or any kind of inorganic, but with a semi-hydro kind of setup, it is wrong to assume that you can start adapting roots that are already in the pot to a climate that you are going to transition to. First of all, you don't know what state the media is in. We can rely on what we see on top. For example, here I've got pumice and loose bark, but we don't know if the nursery just up pots and what is around the root ball. We don't know if the orchid was just taken out, put into another pot, and then we see the good quality media on top and we think that the entire pot is like that. It could be the case. More often than not, it's not the case. So we don't know that the media has already gone acidic, if it's gone acidic, which is already detrimental to the roots as is. But now we're going to add more water and start to acclimate the roots while in the media that we don't know what it's like, thinking that we're already training the roots to come accustomed to their new media and suddenly we lose whatever's in the pot. Now more often than not also we get an orchid that looks great on the surface and we think, well, if it looks like this, then we have roots in the pot that are viable. Yeah, it could be if you're lucky, but the general case scenario is that's not the case and it all looks hunky-dory and when we take it out, we just get brown strips that are falling apart. So my recommendation is pretend as if you're not going to transition the orchid, pretend that this is the setup that it is going to be in for a considerable amount of time and treat it with a wet-dry cycle to what it is accustomed to. If you don't know what is in the pot because I don't have a clear pot and I haven't taken this orchid out to have a look at it, then all I do while I'm waiting for the signs of new root growth is I missed just what I can see on the surface to make sure that I don't do any damage by pre-soaking, too much soaking, because I don't know what is in there. We are about to find out. So all I do is mist what I can see. On arrival, of course, the whole pot gets drenched with calcium, magnesium, and seaweed, but that is only on arrival and then maybe another day after the wet dry cycle. And after that, all I do is make sure that I keep what I can see on the surface happy. And you can see at least that little stub of a root there is greening up. And the best time to repot any orchid at any given time, of course, is when there's new root growth, which I also happen to have right now. Another thing I don't like to do personally because I'm a little bit clumsy is to wait until the roots grow longer. I prefer them at nubbin stage because then I don't do as much damage. And I also prefer to clean up old sheaths 
but because I have a little bit of an injury on my right hand, I'm not gonna do that because with a glove, I can't work as well and precisely, and I don't want to break this new growth. So all that set aside, treat the orchid in the pot with the wet dry cycle, work with the media that it has, pretend that it is bad media and keep your pH as high as 6.5 when you are just misting. This root here might be able to tolerate lower pH, but the inside of the pot might not. And that is why a higher pH at least gives you that margin that whatever is happening in the pot, if it is already too acidic, which you don't know, you're not adding too low a pH into that and making the situation worse. So covering worst case scenario, protect what you can see on top, wait for new roots, do not transition the orchid while in the old media, thinking you can adapt the roots to a higher moisture environment while it's still in the old pot. So let's actually see what we've got in the pot. Another thing I always like to do is work away from the root tips. So I make sure as best as I can that everything that is new and growing, like this root tip here in the front, I do not unpot the orchid in that direction. I unpot it in the opposite direction. All right, oh, <laughs> well, classic, classic. I had no idea what was in this pot. And I just mentioned not acclimating roots because we don't know what's in the pot. And look at this plug here. And you see, even with me thinking that all I'm doing is misting the surface, Look at how wet this is. Look at that. And I am in southern Spain where everything dries out really quickly because I still have very, very warm temperatures at this point in time. Look at this. Now imagine, okay, these roots are dead anyway, but just imagine there were healthy, viable roots in here. And we went and tried to transition the orchid to get adapted into Lecca self-watering, semi-hydroponics, inorganic media, etc. We would have lost all the viable roots that were in this media right here. Okay, it's dead, but what if they had been alive? Check this out. Classic example of taking an orchid out of a pot at the nursery and then just putting it in a bigger pot with nicer looking media for the eye of the customer. But this, yeah. So this is gonna be relatively easy because if I wanted to be really dr drastic about it, I could just try and fandangle the entire root ball to such a point that all I need to do is chop off the ball in one big go. But I have to be careful because I don't know where the rhizome is. It looks like this orchid has a bit of a climbing tendency, but yeah. So. My little how to transition successfully from bark or let's say organic media into inorganic media and establish your orchids into Lekka self-watering semi-hydroponics. It is not in chronological order. Clearly, I don't have candidates that come up so that I can do the example videos at a regular basis. So when a candidate does come up and it is time to address it, I will make a video according to the subject matter that this candidate poses. And in this case is, do not transition your orchid while it is still in the old pot that it came with. There we have a good root. We'll make sure we'll take care of that. But treat the orchid as if you were gonna leave it in that media so that you do not compromise whatever could be healthy in the pot by oversaturating the media in the pot and you don't know the quality of the media that you've got in the pot if it were pot bound so yeah that is why a little bit of not chronological order with this series but i hope that eventually all the puzzles will come together and of course in the comments section below i can always answer any questions of videos that have not actually been filmed yet if you are ready to transition because let's say the hemispheres and the climate everybody is different i'm heading into fall well i am in fall but you know even if i would prefer to do this in spring if my orchid tells me i'm growing roots and i want to transition this orchid into my media then i'm pulling the trigger it's go time no matter the time of year 
But of course, in spring, when everything starts to really actively grow, you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable doing what you're doing. So if you're heading into that climate and you want to transition an orchid and you have questions and the video hasn't come out yet based on your question, then please leave that in the comments below. I feel as though I'm going to need a chainsaw to get this out. My goodness. For seedlings, I have no problem when they put orchids into sphagnum moss for seedlings. I mean, that's what, that's the norm. Little orchids need a little bit more moisture around them. But to leave a plug like that and see that the plug is there and you're going to up pot it and just leave it, that to me is unacceptable. Now, if you don't have time as a nursery to take off the sphagnum moss and do a proper job of it, at least a little bit, at least tease out that moss a little bit, give the orchid a chance, give the new owner a chance <laughs> to grow that orchid successfully. Oh well, hey ho. Right, I'm going to continue cleaning this up just to make sure that I don't break that root. And I will get back to you when we start looking at other little details. So in the process of cleaning up, I damaged the one good root that was in the sphagnum moss. This is collateral damage. This is not <laughs> something we like to see or have happen, but let me just say it's not the end of the world. And that is why I always say, wait for new roots, new roots, and this won't damage or affect the orchid at all. If you transition far too early and if you think, well, I'm just going to go ahead even though the orchid itself is not growing new roots and then you break a really good root, that is a little bit more drastic. That has a little bit more of issues coming along with it because yeah, every root is precious if you don't have your backup plan already underway. So after removing the old roots, here come some factors. Normally, like I said at the beginning, I would take it under water, go at it with a toothbrush and rub off all these old sheaths just to, just for aesthetics. I can see there are no pests here. One time when it rained heavily, I let this one be out in the rain. I softened up the sheaths and peeled them off little bit by little bit. So I normally would take a toothbrush under the faucet and just start brushing very, very gently all these sheaths off. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. Another thing to take into consideration is in this instance here, I have a long one directional growth of a rhizome and I can put her in the pot like this and it wouldn't be an issue. Now, I don't see any viable eyes back here at all, but I honestly don't want to have all this in a pot even though they are storage organs. All right, so this is something to take into consideration when you're at this stage and you're wondering, should I just keep the orchid intact or leave it? So another little factor to consider, how strong is your orchid before you remove anything as opposed to what you're going to remove? And in this case, I have a strong orchid. I have four mature bulbs in the front and I've got roots growing. I have some viable roots right here. And if the bark comes off, great. If it doesn't, that is not a problem because the majority of the pot is going to be inorganic anyway. What we are going to do is at least try and get off what we can that comes off gently. And yes, a pre-soak would have helped to dissolve a little bit the contact here between the bark and the root. But in my case, seeing as she was in a wet, dry cycle, I was trying to really baby these roots. I wasn't going to keep soaking. And wow, am I glad because of that nasty, acidic sphagnum moss at the end. So in this case, I could just jiggle the bark off gently. And if it weren't going to come off, then I would just leave it because at the end of the day, it's not an issue. We don't want to damage any of the vellum as best as possible. Right. Back to what we've got here. I want to remove the back here because I've got enough energy in the front. And then, goodness me, what if this actually starts to grow an eye in the back on both pieces and I get two directions of growth and this one actually recovers because this orchid is pretty 
vigorous. Something else to take into consideration, know the orchid that you're dealing with. If it is a species, for example, and you have these circumstances in a species, they are slow growers, their adaptation and transition phase is much slower. So I wouldn't actually cut anything off if this was a full species, but it's got a cross in it. It is a vigorous orchid and yeah, that is why it's okay to take it off in this case. Now let's go have a look. Do we need a soak? You know what? I am going to preempt something here and I'm going to soak her in Faisan 20 just to make sure that if there is Fusarium in there and it's not just the woody outer parts of the rhizome, at least I'm not going to pot her up and second guess I'm treating her for Fusarium just in case I see something here that I'm not quite happy with. When in doubt, stay on the safe side. Okay, so Faisan 20, one US gallon, equivalent of 3.7 liters, one US tablespoon of Faisan 20, equivalent of 15 milliliters. So I don't have a problem so much with the back division here, because that can just go straight in. But I do want to protect my new growth here. And I wonder, I can support it somehow like this or I need to get a separate vessel. You see that growth that won't allow me at this point to soak it just like this. So I'm going to have to find a different solution, solve that problem somehow, but this one is just going straight in like that. As a point of interest, when I look at these roots and I consider that maybe the orchid has Fusarium, the start of Fusarium, I could say these roots do indicate that there is an issue if in the classical sense the orchid were to have Fusarium. They start to look little nasty, woody, root tips would dry back and everything. But I think this is more a cultural thing. If this orchid does have Fusarium, we got to it on time. But I think these roots are more of a cultural thing, the media, etc., because the new growth is absolutely dripping with happy sap. That would not be the case if this was for a bad case of Fusarium, let's put it that way. This is not me getting the orchid wet. This is all happy sap. That means that she is hydrating through these roots. This wouldn't happen if it was a really bad case. So I'm not too concerned about it. Let's get her potted up. Judging by the root size, judging also by the fact I'm going into cooler climates, taking the evaporative cooling of LECA as such already into the equation, and the roots, as I mentioned, being nice, thick, large roots, they have a capacity of branching, I am using large LECA so that when it comes to the winter, at least there will be a somewhat drier climate in the pot, but not dry. This method is not about wet-dry cycle. There is a way to be able to tweak the climate of the pot by using the right size LECA as best as possible. What I have in here is calcium, magnesium and seaweed. Now I can go in at 6.3 pH. I can soak the roots, submerge them. They are clean. I don't have to worry about what's in the pot. Now I know what's in the pot and that's why I can pH now at 6.3 and potter up in the submerged method just to make sure that we protect the roots that are there because for a little bit of time they're going to have to be doing the work until the new roots come into play. All right well there they both are. One piece in ICU. Let's see if it does anything. Give that a go, see what happens. And this piece is higher than I normally would pot. This time of year, heading into fall, I don't want my orchid to be so low in the pot. I don't need to have the cold humidity around the base of the orchid. 
I want the roots, you can see there is still a little bit of suspended method going on here. I want the roots to find their way into the media and also protect the roots that are used to a different kind of media. Make sure that they are okay with a somewhat wetter environment, but a lot of flushing is gonna happen from here on in. A lot of light training as well. There's a slight creeping rhizome here on this orchid. So this one looks like it's going straight out. I want it to come back up. So I'm gonna have the light source at this end so that this growth here hopefully bends its way back up. It's gonna stay for the time being in this location just to dry off everything. And uh, well, there's little nubbins coming here, which I hope are roots or another little eye back here, maybe. It's hard to tell at this point in time whether it would activate. But first of all, these two roots that are right here, they need to get down into the media. And I will continue what I did before. Yes, I will flush a little bit more, but you can see I have one root here, this stub right here, it is viable. So I will be misting that root on occasions just to do what I did before, repotting her. We had a little bit of a curveball here, but I hope that this video was helpful. Let's take it back to what the purpose of this video was, how to prepare your orchid for a transition when you receive her from the nursery or in the mail. Not to go in and think you can start the transitioning process while the orchid is still in the old pot, old media, and possibly risking roots. That goes for any orchid, not just a bifoliate, any orchid whatsoever. Any questions at all? You know the drill? Please, please leave me everything in the comments below. I'd be very happy to elaborate. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time spending it here with me in Southern Spain, where we are still having quite lovely, lovely days. <laughs> oh, they're gonna go soon. But anyway, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.